Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of orders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Confused. We're confused by Trump's plans, our plans still being stalled by suicidal leftist fanatics who, if not stopped, will get many of us killed. Have a nice day. I can't say any more. Now, the rest, of course, is commentary upon that statement I just made. I'll repeat it in case you missed it. We are all confused by Trump's plans and our plans still being stalled by suicidal leftist fanatics who, if not stopped, will get many of us killed. Whatever else I'm going to say today and the rest of the week is commentary upon that one statement. The American cultural revolution that we are living through is what I'm going to talk about a little bit, leading right up to the Super Bowl ads, which were disgustingly political. I ask you again, what happened to our beloved America? We once put a man on the moon. Now left-wing fanatical protesters give us their full moon in broad daylight in San Francisco and other cities. We in America, with no help from Al Gore, invented the information superhighway. Internet entrepreneurs created great companies like eBay and Amazon, accelerating global commerce. How did we decline so rapidly that we're doing nothing but watching anarchists in the streets being supported by congresswomen who say it was beautiful? The only thing certain to me is that America's wounds are internal. Radical Islamists are determined to kill us and wipe great Satan America and little Satan Israel off the map. ISIS, Iran, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Saudi Arabian Wahhabi nutcases all want to destroy us. The World War II generation faced threats head on. Now by inactivity or through liberal self-loathing, we help those who are trying to kill us. The Iran nuclear deal by Obama gave over $150 billion to a nation chanting every day for our destruction. How insane have we become? Iranians yell death to America. We respond by giving them the tools to carry out their wishes. The greatest generation defeated the Nazis and communism. Now radical Muslims are threatening us and millennials are too busy to fight. Islamists watch training videos on how to carry out jihad against the infidels while our kids are too busy texting and taking selfies. Everything is a selfie. Our enemies are preparing our funerals. Why our young people worry that pictures of the funerals will not show up on their Instagram accounts. Iran is trying to set up a global caliphate while we strive to become the next Mozambique, one of the poorest nations on the planet. How did, did, how did the Islamists go from being a regional power to a global fighting force? How did Americans end up actually supporting our enemies with crackpot judges from Seattle supporting them? It starts with a culture that shares a common bond with our enemies. They don't want us to exist and neither do we. Forget good breeding. We don't do any breeding. Islamists have 14 children apiece, so losing seven children to homicide bombings is a drop in the bucket. We went from having 2.3 children to an abortion culture and an overpriced Manhattan loft. A three-bedroom family house is a waste when there is no family. Islamists ban birth control and, and turn their women into baby jihad factories. We have feminists demanding a life of free sex with unlimited trips to the abortion clinic. Most people would never connect abortion to radical Islam, but you're smarter than most people. But don't just take my words for it. Look at the numbers. There are 1.2 billion Muslims in the world. America has at last count 320 some odd people. With so many illegals pouring in, it is tough to get an accurate count. There are roughly four times as many Muslims as Americans. They keep adding to their ranks, and we keep importing illegals because our own people eliminate their babies. At this rate, we will go the way of Euro Europistan. Italy has had a declining birth rate in recent years. Europe is finished. They refuse to reproduce while Islamist women keep churning out the next generation of Islamists. The Center for Disease Control reported in 2011 over 730,000 abortions were performed in the United States. That is 100,000 more people than in the entire state of Vermont. Imagine if we woke up one day and found out that all of Vermont was aborted. As tempting it is as it is not to bring the next Bernie Sanders into the world, think of an entire state just empty. That was in one year. Since Roe v. Wade in 1973, 54 million abortions have taken place. We voluntarily killed off between 15 and 20 percent of our population. And by the way, the next time you hear a leftist say that illegals do the jobs Americans refuse to do, just remember how many Americans we killed off. Had those babies been born, there would be no labor shortage today. Their children, and in rare cases grandchildren, could have joined the United States military. Instead, Islamists are breeding and Americans are bleeding. I'll say it again in case you missed it. It's got nice iambic pentameter. Wolf Blitzer, pay attention, you psychotic moron, you. Jake Tapper, you stupid drug addict moron. You're a drug addict. You're addicted to your liberalism. You sick man, you. Idiots. Morons on CNN. Islamists are breeding and Americans are bleeding. It's easy for Islamists to chant death to America. We eliminated one-fifth of their obstacles and made their job 20% easier, Jake. At least some Americans are still having children. Unfortunately, many of those children spend their formative years being taught how to surrender. Thank you, Berkeley. 
The emasculation of American boys is one step short of suicide. Muslims are living in patriarchal societies, while American boys are being emasculated by feminism. Schoolyards used to be filled with kids at recess playing games like kill the guy with the ball. Nobody died. We played smear the queer. Nobody sued anybody. Boys played with G.I. Joes and girls played with dolls. Kids played freeze tag without a single incident of sexual harassment. Cartoons were filled with violence. Bugs Bunny tied the gun in a knot and Elmer Fudd's gun went kaboom, covering his own head in black soot. Wiley Coyote chased the roadrunner and fell off his death, fell off the cliff to his death. We as children knew not to try and jump off the roof. Teenage boys watched Rocky and Rambo. Then we came home without trying to kill anybody. We did not need liberals to tell us the difference between pretend and real life. Common sense and our parents handled that. Now schools across the country are canceling gym class. Even rock, paper, scissors is too violent. Rocks and scissors could be used by children to harm each other. Paper requires murdering trees. It's no wonder Islamists produce strapping young men, while America produces sensitive crybabies. Muslim children are taught to hate in madrasas. They are taught how to kill the infidels and the blasphemers. American boys are suspended from school for arranging the school lunch vegetables in the shape of a gun. Perhaps it's good they get suspended. Michelle Obama used to starve our children anyway. Pizza, burgers, and fries are replaced with gluten-free, calorie-free, free, flavor-free garbage that the kids throw away. Then they race home and grab a hamburger on the way home because growing boys want more than an apple slice and a fiber protein bar. During World War II, young boys volunteered to go overseas to save the world. The Korean War had Colonel David Hackworth teaching our young military best to kill a commie for mommy. Now American kids on college campuses retreat to their safe spaces to escape from potential microaggressions. Islamists cut off heads and limbs, and our young boys shriek at the drop of a microaggression, marching with Islamists and hating Trump. This is Michael Savage. What I'm reading to you is a continuation of what I wrote for you in my last books, Government Zero and Scorched Earth. What I'm reading to you can be found on this radio show and in Trump's war. We are in this war. We are all fighting this war. Trump is losing the war. He's writing these laws, and they're not going anywhere because of wackadoodle, suicidal, leftists in the media, and in the courts. During World War II, young boys, as I said to you, volunteered to go overseas to save the world. And I said to you, the Korean War had Colonel David Hackworth teaching our young military best to kill a commie for mommy. And now your children on college campuses retreat, retreat to their safe spaces to escape from so-called microaggressions. Islamists cut off heads and limbs, and our young boys shriek at the drop of a microaggression. Do I have to remind you what happened in Berkeley? Do you know what happened over the weekend after the Berkeley riots? A congresswoman, so-called, from Florida, said it was beautiful to watch the, quote, young people destroying the University of, Cal University of California at Berkeley. You know, when I watch movies and TV shows in the 50s, I see an America that was bold, daring, macho, unafraid, and proud of itself. When I look at America today, I see something else. That is because a very small band of radical, fanatical leftists in the media in the schools and in the courts, have seized every aspect of the media and every avenue of government imaginable. They're ashamed of the very idea of America. They are not the majority and they don't speak for the people. They are a group of political deviants. They are political deviants in a statistical sense, in a political sense, and in a social sense. This small band of deviant judges and deviant media types have wrecked the United States of America and turned us into a nation of almost slaves. These craven apologists have turned the grandchildren of the greatest generation into jellyfish, less brave than the average Frenchman. It is easy to blame the 1960s, flower power, and the radicals that spawned them, nihilistic forces like the Black Panthers and the Weather Underground. It takes a village of people to destroy a child, and they need to be called out by name. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were just symptoms of a much bigger disease. You see, my friends of the Savage Nation, what we're living through right now is part of the disease of the Cultural Revolution, started right around the time Barry Soatero was born. And I'm going to go shortly to the Super Bowl and play the ads, and you will see what I am talking about. You will see how even our sports events have been infected by the radical leftists. This is the savage nation. You just got more than you're going to get for the rest of the week from everything else in the media. Stay tuned, because more is coming. <laughs> 